Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM and the last night with our star of the month, Judy Garland. We've been featuring Judy's movies every Friday night in June. Up next, her triumphant comeback film, one of her signature roles, and the movie that made her a favorite in the race for Best Actress, an award she was nominated for but didn't win. From Warner Brothers in 1954, A Star is Born. George Cukor directed this remake of the 1937 picture, which starred Janet Gaynor and Frederick March. Here, Garland's co-star is James Mason, playing Norman Maine, a major movie star with a crippling drinking problem. His battle with alcoholism is made even more tragic by his underlying decency. He discovers a talented but unknown singer named Esther Blodgett. That's Garland. Norman believes Esther has star quality. He gets her into a movie, and her undeniable talent proves Norman right. She becomes a star, a bigger star than he, a circumstance that only fuels his alcoholism despite his better judgment. Judy Garland was only 14 years old when the original 1937 version of A Star is Born hit theaters, the one with Janet Gaynor and Frederick March, though Garland was already a contract player at MGM at the time. It wasn't long before she played that lead role. Garland starred opposite Walter Pidgeon in a 1942 radio adaptation of A Star is Born. But making a film adaptation looked impossible in 1950 when, after 15 years at MGM, beginning when she was only 13, MGM fired Judy Garland. She had become emotionally unpredictable and unreliable, though MGM certainly played a significant role in putting her in that state, but that's a larger story. What this meant is that in 1950, at the age of just 28, Judy Garland, one of the greatest stars ever to come out of the studio system, was out of work and considered a Hollywood has-been. Fast forward several years and Garland was in a better place. And she wanted this remake of A Star is Born to be her screen comeback with her husband, Sid Luff, producing. It couldn't be merely very good, said Garland. I had too much at stake. I had to prove things. Well, it wasn't merely good. It was thrilling and tragic and intense and brilliant, as was Judy Garland. The film opened to rave reviews and immediate Oscar buzz. However, before the picture opened nationwide, Warner Brothers studio chief Jack Warner felt it was too long and had several scenes deleted, including two numbers with Judy. In the 1980s, author and film preservationist Ron Haver tried to locate the long-lost missing footage to include in a restoration. He found the two missing numbers, Here's What I'm Here For and Lose That Long Face, as well as the original film's entire audio track. In the few scenes where the film footage couldn't be located, you'll see production photos to cover the audio track. From 1954, directed by George Cukor, also with Charles Bickford and Jack Carson, here are James Mason and Judy Garland in A Star is Born. Like Janet Gaynor and Frederick March in the original 1937 version, both Judy Garland and James Mason were Oscar nominees for their performances in A Star is Born. Neither of them won. Mason lost to Marlon Brando for On the Waterfront, and Garland lost to Grace Kelly for The Country Girl. There have been two more remakes of A Star is Born since the 1954 film. A 1976 version set in the world of music instead of movies starred Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson. Streisand won an Oscar in the Best Song category for co-writing Evergreen. Then came a 2018 remake with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper who also directed. And Lady Gaga won an Oscar in the Best Song category for co-writing Shallow. And like the stars of the 1937 and 1954 versions, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper were each Oscar nominees for their leading performances. Coming up, more Judy Garland, this time opposite Burt Lancaster in Judy's penultimate big screen performance. A Child is Waiting is next on TCM.